When it comes to quality sleep, Ashley has you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices and with special financing options available. You can snooze now and pay later. Plus, your mattress purchase helps give the gift of better sleep to children in need and U.S. Special Operations Forces. Visit your local Ashley store or shop online today and make every snooze count. Financing is subject to credit approval. See store or ashley.com for details. Dreaming of overseas adventures or connecting more deeply with family from afar? Rosetta Stone bridges the language gap. I've tried others, but Rosetta Stone's immersive lessons and voice feedback technology are game changers. Dive into 25 languages by learning intuitively, just like when you were a kid. And here's the holiday sparkle. Grab a lifetime membership now and save 50%. Gift yourself the world. Head to rosettastone.com now and save 50%. Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me as always, ladies and gentlemen, the leader of the Ban the Van movement. He is our captain. I don't care if it says free hugs. I don't care if it says free drugs. I don't care if they're giving away free wine or some booze. Stay away from the van. It's good to be seen. It's good to see you. Thanks for listening, and thanks for telling a friend. This week, we are featuring East Pass IPA by the happy folks at Destin Brewery in Florida. This is a traditional style yet easy drinking India pale ale brewed with local Destin honey with an ABV of 6.3%. Garage grade three and a half bottle caps out of five. And our fridge is full this week. Thanks to our friends. First up, cheers to Vanessa H. from the parts that are still unknown. And a big shout out to Elizabeth and Riverview, Florida. And cheers to everyone up in the great country of Canada, specifically Samantha from Keswick, Ontario. And a big shout out to Christopher in Sturges, Michigan. And we have our friend Paula from Nashville. We met her at CrimeCon 2018 in Nashville. She contributed to the beer fund because we convinced her to lock her garage door. And last but certainly not least, we have Melanie and Daphne, a.k.a. Velma, listening at work in Raleigh, North Carolina. Everyone we just mentioned went to TrueCrimeGarage.com and contributed to this week's beer fund. And for that, we thank you. Yeah, big cheers, mates. And if you'd like to check out our old episodes, check us out on the Stitcher app. All of our episodes are on the Stitcher app for free. And we have a weekly show called Off the Record where it's just uncut and a little crazy. And you can find Off the Record on Stitcher Premium. And that is enough of the business. All right, everybody, gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Okay, 
Okay, what was she what, last seen wearing? <laughs> Ma'am? She was in her pajamas. We were sleeping. Okay, all right. You said your back door was wide open? Yes, yeah, it was brick. Like, it was brick on the floor. Like, when I went to sleep, the door was not like that. Okay, the back it's door... Wide. Listen to me. Your back door was wide open. What are you talking about, a brick? Yes. What What is the brick? It's on the back door, on the, on the stairs. Like, we have, like, a walkway. Uh-huh. And there was a brick laying there? Yes, it's still there. Wait, we got him coming. Tell him we got him coming. They're coming. Okay, what's the color of your house, ma'am? It's blue. Blue? Okay. <laughs> okay, what... What does she look like? How tall is she? Give me some description of her. Oh, she has, like, like long hair, curly, like, curls. Long, <laughs> curled. What, what color? Oh, um, she's white. Okay, what and color is she? Brown hair? Brown hair? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so old. Okay. How tall is she about? Or how much does she weigh? Do you know that? Huh? About how tall or how much does she weigh? Like, four and five, like, I don't know, like, she's not that tall. Okay, wait, tell, tell your husband we got him coming, okay? Okay. How much does she weigh, do you know? Huh? How much does she weigh? Um, like, 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds. 40 to 60 pounds? Yeah. Okay, let me get your name and phone number. My name is... So your last name? <laughs> okay, was your was your back door locked, do you know? Yes, the back door always stayed locked. Okay, let me speak to her so he can... Yeah, 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 yeah. I just got home from work. My five-year-old daughter is gone. I okay. need somebody to be here so now. I'm listen telling to me. You. Listen to me. We got two officers. If I find whoever has my daughter before y'all do, I'm killing them. I don't care. Uh, okay. I'm going to rest okay. my life in prison. I'm telling you, you can put it on record, and I don't care. Okay, it's okay, sir. We got him on the way. Okay, can you give me any what kind of description of her pajamas that she was wearing? I don't fucking know. I got work. Okay, sir. We got him coming. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to get that. Like it, does it look like you had some sort of someone try to enter into your house? Um, hold on. And, and another thing, make sure you and your husband don't touch the door anymore. Yeah. Don't don't mess with the door or anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it is? No. Okay, now listen, tell your husband you not to touch want. anything. Make Box sure it's because we're going to try to get a canine out there. Okay. 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 She said don't touch anything because they're bringing canine out here. Okay, okay, we understand. We got him on the way, okay? What's her name? How do you spell her first name? What? What's her middle uh, name? Yeah. And the spelling of the last name is... Um, well, that's my last name. Okay. That's not her. That name is... I... Where did you... What's her date of birth? Okay. I'm to
fucking Native Hurricane. We need to find her. Fuck her, Native Hurricane. Okay, listen to me. I'm getting this information. I'm not the officer driving out there, okay? okay. They're, they're coming out there to handle that situation. I need to gather all information from you over the phone. It okay. has nothing to do with me driving out there. The officers are taking care of that, okay? They're coming out there, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to stay on the phone with you, okay? Okay. Until they get there, all right. Hang on. Tell him we got him coming. He needs to try to calm down a little bit, okay? The officers are going to come out there and do what they can. We can't have him screaming and yelling at the officers whenever they get there, okay? That is a 911 call that came into the Putnam County, Florida Sheriff's Office at 327 a.m. on Tuesday, February 10th, 2009. Now, as you can hear, there are some strange things on this call. First, we should point out that the caller is Misty Crossland. She says she noticed around 3 a.m. that little five-year-old Haley Cummings is missing. The call to 911 was not placed until 327. Misty says she found the back door of the trailer home, which she states is always locked, propped open with a brick. This turns out to be a cinder block that police believe came from the yard outside of the home. The man heard in the background and then on the phone is Ronald Cummings. Yeah, they claim the brick was propping open the screen door. Ronald is 25 years old and Haley's father, and Misty is Ronald's 17-year-old girlfriend. Ronald was at work and Misty stayed home to watch Ronald's two children, Haley and her brother, three-year-old Ron Jr. Two deputies were dispatched to 202 Green Drive in the small town of Satsuma. They arrived at the double-wide trailer home at 3.40 a.m. When we say trailer home, we are referring to those modular, one-level homes that are not portable but also not built into the ground. This trailer had dark green carpeting throughout most of the living areas, green and white floral wallpaper, and one bedroom, two bathrooms, and a kitchen. Upon arrival, deputies found a white male standing in the driveway, who was visibly upset. He identified himself as Ronald Cummings. He said his daughter, Haley Cummings, age five, was missing. Ron said he had just got home from work, and his, quote, dumb bitch girlfriend, told him his daughter was missing. Ron then repeatedly said that someone had taken his child and said, quote, when I find him, I'll kill him. Deputies then spoke with Misty Crossland, the girl who called 911. Misty was babysitting Haley and her little brother, Ron Jr. that evening. Now, we need to explain a little bit of background here. Misty Crossland was from a local family with a long history of bad behavior. Her parents were both drug addicts and alcoholics with long records and Misty dropped out of school in the sixth grade. Misty met Ronald Cummings a few months earlier at the school bus stop for the trailer park where Misty would accompany her nephew. She started babysitting for Ron's kids. Ron Haley's and Ron Jr.'s father was 25 years old and was divorced from the kid's mother, Crystal Sheffield, whom he had also met when she was a minor and who had gotten pregnant with Haley when she was just 17. Ronald had custody of the kids. There are varying reports for the reasons for this. Some say it's because Ron had health insurance through his job that covered the children. Mm -hmm. Some say that it's because Crystal was a habitual drug user and was negligent. In any event, Ron had the kids. Well, and the other claim, too, is that she didn't have a job at the time, so he would actually be the only parent that could support them. Crystal got the children every other weekend. Ron wasn't an angel either. He had a history of arrest. 
Their relationship was acrimonious with custody disputes and allegations of both spousal and child abuse leveled at Ron by Crystal and drug arrest on both sides. Ron had been looked into by the Florida Department of Children and Families at least once. This is because Crystal said that Haley missed school a lot and had visible injuries from beatings by Ron. For her part, there is no doubt that Crystal had a problem with drugs in the past and it possibly persisted in the year of 2009. The deputy on the scene quickly deduced that 17-year-old Misty was not just the babysitter. She was sleeping in Ron Cummings' bed. And she told the 911 dispatcher that, quote, our daughter was missing. Misty and Ron were romantically involved for a few months. Misty's family lived nearby at 116 Tyler Street. Misty told the deputy that she put the children to bed at approximately 8 p.m. She did some laundry, and then she went to bed around 10 to 10.30 in the same bed as the kids. This is in the master bedroom of the trailer home. Both kids were peacefully sleeping at that time. Misty said she woke up at 3 a.m., to get a drink of water and then saw the kitchen light was on and the back door was propped open with the brick. Mm -hmm. She then ran back to the bedroom and noticed that Haley was missing. Misty ran around frantically looking for the child, looking under beds and in the closet. She said that Ron arrived home from work around 325 and told her to call the police. He handed the phone to her and you can hear him say, Something to the effect of, bitch, how did you get my daughter stole? Very soon after deputies arrived on the scene, Ron's mother, Teresa, arrived. She pulled up to the scene bearing a 8x10 class photo of Haley. Hmm. Ron had called her and told her what was happening. She later said that she lived about 15 miles away and had driven like a bat out of hell to get to Ron's house to help find her granddaughter. She was sure that Haley was just hiding somewhere and would be found. Now, the search is going to begin at this time, but before we get into that, just throwing this out here, some people have questioned Teresa's timeline, that it just doesn't add up. Right. She lived 15 miles away, yet arrived on the scene within five minutes, apparently, of Ron calling her, supposedly while Misty was still on the phone with 911. And... She had that photo with her, the class photo in hand. Right. People have pointed out that maybe she was aware of the situation before police, what they told police, they notified her of this situation. Well, it's also kind of strange that his girlfriend's using his phone to call 911 and he's apparently using her phone to call his mother. Right. And there's also the statement of Teresa, his mother, saying, I'm sure that Haley was just hiding somewhere, yet she she was thoughtful enough to bring the class photo with her. Right. And the fact that chances are just knowing what I know about Haley's father, he probably doesn't actually have a school picture of his own daughter. So let's discuss the events of the day before Haley disappeared. According to Misty, Ron, and some witnesses, these events were normal. In the morning, Ron Misty, Ron Jr., and Haley drove to Haley's grandmother's home to get some clothes Haley wanted to wear to school that morning. Before they left, they had breakfast. Then they dropped off Haley at Browning Pierce School. The start time, 8.45 a.m. Ron and Misty went back to bed until noon or so, and they did some stuff around the house until Ron picked up Haley at the school bus stop at 3.20. Ron then left for work. We know that he arrived at PDM about 45 minutes early for his 5 p.m. shift. At 5 p.m., Misty called Ron to see why the air conditioning repair guy arrived at their house. She handed the phone to the repairman to speak with Ron. At this point, Misty's brother, Tommy Crossland, Tommy's real name, if if you're going to look these individuals up online, His real name is Hank Crossland Jr., but he goes by Tommy. Mm -hmm. So this man, Tommy, was also at the house with with the kids, and they were playing with Ron Jr. and Haley. He has kids of his own that he brought with him as well. At 5.30 or so, Tom and his kids and the repairman, they all left the home. 
Around 6 p.m., Misty said she started dinner and cooked for about 30 to 45 minutes. Meanwhile, Haley and Ron Jr. were watching movies. At 7 p.m., the kids were seen eating dinner on the front porch. This is by their grandmother. She stopped over to deliver some clothes. After dinner, prior to getting Haley to bed, Misty said she put Haley's blanket in the washer because it smelled like pee, like urine. Haley went to bed at approximately 8 p.m. This is her normal bedtime, according to Misty, on a school night. She was wearing her pink Hannah Montana shirt and underwear. Now, note, though, that the police report says pink shirt and tan shorts. Right. At 8.30, Misty said she had a fight with Ron over the phone, and she turned her phone off. Between 8 and 9.30, Misty was doing laundry. She stated it took probably 30 minutes for it to wash and probably 60 minutes for it to dry. And soon as that was done, she went to bed in the room with the two children where she slept. Yeah, so they have a, I'd say maybe a queen-size bed that they slept in, and then their it looked like the mattress pad that you would actually put into a crib, but mm-hmm. it wasn't in a crib. It was just on the floor. Right. And you'll notice throughout this episode and the next one discussing this case and discussing the the details of the events leading up to and the details right around and shortly after the 911 call, they will change a little bit. And that's because we have people whose stories are changing a little bit. Yeah. Earlier, we said that Misty said that she slept in the same bed with both of the children. And later she would say that she slept in the bed with Ron Jr. And that Haley was in the small bed beside her bed. I I believe some of these inconsistencies are just not really knowing or it's, it's not necessarily a lie, but a partial truth. Maybe they did fall asleep in the bed together. And then if she woke up at some point that, that Haley wasn't on the bed anymore and and was in her bed. So I think that's where we're getting some inconsistencies. Misty did not wake until she got up at 3 a.m. According to her story, this is either to get a drink or to use the restroom. Her story has varied. And she says that she noticed that Haley was gone. Now Ron arrives home at 3:25 a.m. and tells Misty to call 911 and that call came in at 3:27 a.m. Now Captain, I think that we should review that call as it's it's hard to hear and as we pointed out there are some strange things in that call. Yeah, and that's the best quality that we could find and we we kind of question using it anyways because it's so hard to understand the actual context of what they're saying, but we do believe that it also paints a picture Mm -hmm. uh, of that moment. So let's listen to those clips. We're going to break them down into smaller clips and then dissect each one of them. Okay. Clip one. I just woke up and our back door was all open and we can't find our daughter. Can't find what? Our daughter. Okay. What's your address? Um, three lanes. What's the numerical? The numerical. What's that? The, The number green lane. Yes. Okay, when did you last see her? Um, we were just like, you know, it was about 10 o'clock. We were, she was sleeping, like, she's cleaning. Okay, how old is your daughter? She's five. Okay, so 911, what's your emergency? Misty Crossland is, is first heard saying, Hi, um, I just woke up and our back door was wide open, and I think and I can't find our daughter. You can't find what? Our daughter. Okay, what's your address? Now, Misty Crossland's answer, we cannot we cannot hear there, and it's not even deciphered on this transcript. But when she's asked to give the, the numerical, she doesn't know what that means. I don't have so much of an issue with that. She gives the, the, the street as Green Lane, and then you do hear her bleeped out. That would be where she's giving the full street address and this shows that she's uneducated i don't believe that she's stupid i just think she's uneducated well and she's 17 yeah we factor that in and if she is to be believed she's in a very stressful situation now mind you per the information we have she has only been romantically involved with ron for a handful of months and may not be 
quick on her head feet, as I like to say, about some of the information that she's asked to provide. Right, because she is technically not the mother. So when did you, okay, when did you last see her? Misty responds, um, we like just, you know, it was about 10 o'clock. She was sleeping. I was cleaning. Okay. How old is your daughter? Misty quickly responds with, she is five. I don't have any problem. I've, I've seen a lot of people online having a big issue with Misty saying our daughter is missing. Right. I don't find that to be problemsome. I, I just, what's well, an emergency. You don't have time to explain. Well, technically it's not my real daughter, but I'm, but I'm sleeping with her father right. and uh, I take care of her every day. Um, you know what I mean? Like you don't have time for that. Right. And the way that I try to really view nine one one calls, because there's, there's varying, uh, sides of, of the coin here. Some people will argue that you can detect a lot of guilt and a lot of information can be pried from the person making the call. Mm -hmm. and what information they provide and what information they do not provide. And then there's other people that just say, you know what, they're reacting to a to a situation we can't figure out or should not speculate how one should react or or what they should be doing in that moment. I like to fall right between the two of those. My thought is is the general thought of anytime you're calling 911, you're you're asking for help. You're, you're very simply put asking for help and assistance in a situation. So I'm looking for people who are being helpful or unhelpful in that situation. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to look at. So saying our daughter, just like you said, Captain, it's just really getting the information, the very gist of it as quick as possible to the 911 operator. In that situation, you're probably thinking the faster that I provide good information to them, the faster they're going to appear on the scene, the first responders, God bless you, and that they're going to be able to help or fix this situation. So our daughter, that's no problem for me. The other issue here is she's very young. She's dating this guy that's, you know, there's an age gap there, and he's abusive, and he's in the room with you. And... So there's pressure to talk to the 911 dispatcher, but there's also, there has to be that pressure that you're going to say something wrong and piss off this guy that possibly will punch you in the face. Yeah. And I, I don't know how far I want to go down that road because I know there's a lot more allegations of abuse than actual proof of such, but you're right, captain, that will be an underlining issue throughout the, the course of this week's case. I do find odd that, that she points out that she was cleaning, you know, okay, when did you last see Haley? Um, we like just, you know, it was about 10 o'clock. She was sleeping. I was cleaning. And I, I only really point this out because of what we will hear later in the 911 call. Right. But it's, it's not the very simple answer that I think is most direct and most quick to the point of saying, I, I went to bed around 10 she was in the room with me. That That's just where my head would go. Again, this is a stressful situation. Well, yeah, it gets a little convoluted there because is she talking about doing laundry? Is that a part of cleaning? Or was she trying to clean but then was cleaning for a minute and then laid down with the kids you know, and passed I, out? I thought about that too when analyzing the 911 call, What what my verbiage would be. And I was thinking about it this way, like if, if I were simply just doing laundry and you asked me, Hey, what are you doing? I go, I'm doing some laundry. Now, if I were doing laundry and cleaning the house right. at the same time, which, you know, you can do thanks to these wonderful washing machines that do the washing for you. Mm -hmm. I would, I would summarize it by I'm, I'm doing some cleaning. I would just bundle that in there with the right. laundry and cleaning all in one. Let's hear clip two. Okay, well, was she what last seen wearing? Ma'am? And I was like, Mama, we were sleeping. Okay, all right. You said your back door was wide open? Yeah, it was brick. Like, it was a brick on the floor. Like, when I went to sleep, the door was not like that. Okay, the back door, listen to me. Your back door was wide open. What are you talking about, a brick? Yes. What, what is the brick? 
It's on the back door on the, on the stairs. Like, we have, like, a walkway. Uh-huh. And there was a brick laying there? Yes, it's still there. They are. We, we got them coming, Tom. We got them coming. They're coming. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you look forward to the holidays? Maybe you struggle with seasonal blues. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or even anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash garage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash garage. Dreaming of overseas adventures or connecting more deeply with family from afar? Rosetta Stone bridges the language gap. I've tried others, but Rosetta Stone's immersive lessons and voice feedback technology are game changers. Dive into 25 languages by learning intuitively, just like when you were a kid. And here's the holiday sparkle. Grab a lifetime membership now and save 50%. Gift yourself the world. Head to rosettastone.com now and save 50%. You can live out your master chef dreams when you find a professional on Angie to tackle your dream kitchen remodel. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Visit Angie.com. You can do this when you Angie that. All right, we're back. Cheers, mates. Big garage cheers. Okay, in this portion of the call, this is where I really first start hearing Ronald in the background. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to keep in mind that during this 911 call, we have Misty who who is talking to the operator as well as we have Ronald talking to her as well. So she's being kind of torn into two different conversations. Um, The 911 operator says, okay, what was Haley last seen wearing? to where she then has to say ma'am because you can hear Ronald in the background. And then Misty comes back and says she was wearing her pajamas. She was sleeping. Okay, all right. You said your back door was wide open. Misty, yes, it was bricked. There was a brick on the floor. When I was asleep, it was not like that. 911, okay, the back door, listen to me. Your back door was wide open. What are you talking about a brick? What is a brick? Misty says, it's almost like on the stairs we have a walkway. 911, and there's a brick lying there. Misty says, yes, it's still there. And then you hear Ron again. He's in the background, and he's saying something to the effect of, tell them they've they've better come. Tell them to come on. And we have the 911 operator trying to cool the situation. She's telling Misty, please tell him we got them coming to which Misty complies. I, I, I don't know that I see anything weird in there. I, I do appreciate the 911 operator trying to keep Misty focused and get the proper information from her, especially about this brick situation with the, the back door there. Yeah, and I think people that claim that any of these comments are guilt or innocent is kind of you know nonsense. Anyways, because this whole brick situation, we don't know if she saw the brick herself or if he, if Ronald comes in and he's just yelling about stuff and saying there was a brick and you know what I mean? Like she might just be tossing out information that he's tossing out. But according to one, at least one of her stories is that she saw the door propped open and that's what prompted her to go back into the room with the kids. Right. And but then that, she notices Haley missing. Right. But that's where it gets weird because I've also heard all these stories that there's two doors. There's a screen door 
And later, it, I believe she says, or, or Ronald says, the screen door was propped open by the brick, and then the, the actual door was wide open. Mm-hmm. And again, her- Leading st- to have both be wide open. Her, her statement to 911 makes it confusing as well, because when they're discussing the, the details about this brick or the door, her first statement is that it was on the floor. The back door is wide open and the brick uh, was a wide open and it was on the floor. And then later saying that it was um, on the stairs, we have a walkway. So Right. And that is... You can almost picture this in your head where it's one door propped open with a brick inside the home and then maybe a screen door going out the other direction propped up on the outside of the home it, with a brick. Yeah. Which it, right. if you're going off of just what she says on nine one one, that's the, the picture that's painted for me. Well, let's get into clip three. Okay. What's the color of your house, ma'am? It's blue. It's blue. Okay. Okay, what what does she look like? How tall is she? Give me some description of her. Oh, she like long hair, curly, like curls. Long, curled, what, what color? Oh, um, she's white. Okay, what and color is she? Brown hair? Brown hair? Yeah. Oh, my God, it's so old. Okay, how tall is she about? Or how much does she weigh? Do you know that? Huh? About how tall or how much does she weigh? Like four and something. Like, I don't know. Like, she's not that tall. Okay, we tell, tell your husband we got him coming, okay? Okay. How much does she weigh? Do you know? Huh? How much does she weigh? Um, like 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds. 40 to 60 pounds? Yeah. Okay, here. So we are getting at this section. They want to know what does the house look like? What color is your house? Missy says blue. Now we got to get a description of Haley. What does she look like? How tall is she? Give me some description of her. Misty says, how tall is she? You know, she's probably either trying to clarify with the operator or asking Ronald, who's in the background, probably stomping around the, the home. Mm-hmm. She goes on to say, Misty says, like long hair, like curly with curls. 911, long curls, what color? Misty, she's white. Well, you're missing the point where she says about four. And I think she's going to say about four feet tall, which would not be correct. But she does clearly state about four. Okay. I couldn't hear that in this this portion. And I guess I'm guessing that the 911 operator could not either. Because they're they're clarifying about the the hair color. What color hair? Brown hair. Misty says yes. Oh my god, or oh my gosh, and, and goes on to say something else that I could not detect there. Well, I, when she initially says what color, she says white. Right. And she's like, no, 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 hair color. Right. And yeah. that's what the nine one one operator wants to clarify. This is where they move on, and they want to know how tall. Haley is okay. How tall is she about or how much does she weigh? Do you know that to which we have the huh response? 911 clarifies about how tall or how much does she weigh? Mm -hmm. Misty 24 sounds about right. I don't know. She's not that tall. That's very confusing to me because that's what I was saying about the four. Okay. It doesn't to me. It's not. I don't know if she says 24. It sounds like four. Right. Um, I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out from that statement if, if 24 is inches yeah, I don't, or, I, or weight or both because she follows it up with, I don't know. She's not that tall. And, right. and she is being asked how tall or how much does she weigh at the same time? Yeah. But, and also think about this when you're raising kids of somebody would have asked me well, how tall is, you know, your littlest steps on at four or five or whenever you you just guess because you don't really yeah. know yeah and, and for me children have always been tough for me to guess like if, if if there's an adult and you ask me for a description i could very quickly right, right. give you approximate height and weight 
Yeah, and then I, I think that's where the next part comes in is when they're they go from height to weight, and then this is again where people will claim that you know she's so dumb or so stupid, and I think some of this is just again how much do they weigh? She's like I don't know forty, fifty, sixty. I think some of that is nerves, obviously, because um, I think. When somebody's asking you a question and you're racing, your brain is racing to get to the answer, but you're kind of, th- this to me proves that she's confused. Oh yeah. And it could be confused for any number of reasons, but that's also why I question what's taking place on this 911 call. Not so much as what she's saying, but it almost seems strange to me that Ronald hands the phone to her. He should be much better equipped to answer all of these questions. Mm. And I'm basing that simply off of the fact that he's the father. Misty's not the mother. And according to the information we have, they were only romantically involved for a short period of time before this 911 call goes down. This is information that he should know. He should be better equipped to provide answers rather than Misty. For the record, according to her missing flyer, Haley is three foot tall and was listed at 39 pounds the day that she went missing. Right, and again, when people go, oh, she's so stupid. How how much does she weigh? I don't know, 40 pounds? Boom, she's 39 pounds. She got it right, but in the state of confusion, I don't know, 40, uh, 50, 60? And what's weird to me like you said, what's going on in the call in the background? How long did this is not a big house? This is a you know a trailer, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, how long does that take for you to go? She's not in here. Okay, now let's look on the outside. Oh, she's not there either. But it's almost like he comes in the house, he's storming around, and instantly he's going. Somebody stole her. And to me, that shows more of uh, what's going on outside uh, of his life. What's going on in his personal life that he would walk in and immediately go, somebody took her. Because the first thought, your kid's not in your bed, not in their bed, where are they? Are they hiding somewhere? Did they go to another room? Did they get outside? Yeah, and we'll get to that portion with this next clip. Okay, let me get your name and phone number. My name is... Spell your last name. <laughs> okay, was your, was your back door locked, do you know? Yes, but that's what I always say, locked. Man, I need somebody to get here now. Okay, let me speak to him so he can... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just got home from work. My five-year-old daughter is gone. I okay. need somebody to be here okay. now. I'm Listen telling to you. me. Listen to me. We got two officers. If I find whoever has my daughter before y'all do, I'm killing them. I don't care. Uh, okay. I'll spend the rest okay. of my life in prison. I'm telling you, you can put it on record, and I don't care. Okay, it's okay, sir. We got them on the way. Okay, can you give me any what kind of description of her pajamas that she was wearing? I don't fucking know. I got work. Okay, sir. We got them coming. Okay. <laughs> And then they hang up. I'm always very suspicious when people hang up on 911. I couldn't find anywhere either Misty or Ronald saying that they got disconnected or anything like that. That So it seems to me like... Which is very possible, though. Right. But, but I would like to know that it, because it, it's weird to me that Ronald would hang up the phone because it, I got to believe it was him. He's the last one speaking before the, the call drops. Yeah, so well, I think it, he was having a hard time in his scene there, pretending to cry, that he maybe didn't know how to continue, so he just hung up the phone. I felt that it was more out of like anger that he may have hung up the phone. So in the beginning of this portion, Very we're, possible. we're again trying to get some more information, just basic stuff, Misty's name and phone number. And then we go back to, was the door, the back door locked? Do you know? Misty says, yes. Ronald, we can hear him saying something like, man, I need somebody to get here now. Yeah. To which the 911 operator wants to speak to Ronald. 
Ronald gets on the phone. And he says, I just got home from work. My five-year-old daughter is gone. I need someone here now. Now, this is where I think the, the statement of I was cleaning from Misty is weird. When I'm kind of layering these all together in one big uh, 911 call, Big Mac, if you want to call it that. So uh-huh. we have the I was cleaning. That was the last time I saw her. I just woke up and she's missing. First thing we hear from Ronald is I just got home from work. It's almost like we're we're laying out alibis. Correct. It almost seems like unnecessary information for the purpose of finding Haley. Well, that's been his story the whole time and will continue to be his mantra, if you will. I was at work. How am I supposed to know? Find my daughter. Everybody needs to be looking for my goddamn daughter. I was at work. How I, how am I supposed to know anything? I mean, that's that's what he does for the next however many years. Well, and then we have the portion of him saying that, it, it, you know, if I find whoever has my daughter before you all do, I'm killing them. I don't care. I will spend the rest of my life in prison. You can put that on the recording. I don't care. Right. Again, that's a whole lot of conversation, unnecessary conversation. I understand he might just be furious and reacting to the situation, but you can go ahead and put that on the recording. I don't care. Almost like right. I want that on the record. I want it on the record to show that I was so upset and angry right. that I come into a situation and my daughter's missing and the fact that she's missing. I'm willing to kill the individual that did it. Yeah, it, that's it, how much I care. And it seems to me almost as if he came home and his daughter's missing and he's going, oh, I knew somebody could take her. Does, does that make any sense? Well, I guess in this situation, he's going off the assumption of seeing the door propped open. And but I think it's more than that. Well, it could be. We we right. don't know. But but the, the very simple thing that I'm looking for in this call, as I stated, is being helpful or unhelpful. Mm-hmm. This whole thing of if I find whoever has my daughter before you do, I'm going to kill him is extremely unhelpful to the for the purpose of the 911 call. Right. And then on on top of that, that statement is strange in itself because during that situation, he's not out looking for anybody. He's not out looking for Haley, he's not out looking for whoever may have took her. Yeah, it seems like he's just stomping around his house. And in this situation, why would you look, if I was the father, it would be me, either me on the 911 call or if I'm handing the phone off to somebody, I'm going outside where I can find this child or the person, or at least have a shot at it. Mm-hmm. At least have a sh- Who's to say that if, if let's say he believes 100% that somebody took her and he's completely innocent of any wrongdoing, there's a, ch- a chance, there's a shot that this person took her and may have been on foot or right. was parked somewhat nearby and this abduction just recently happened mm-hmm. to hand the phone off and then just to stomp around in the background and provide nothing of information and to provide little, if anything, uh, in the way of help for the purpose of, of finding your daughter. Just It's completely backwards. It's completely opposite of the whole purpose of the 911 call to begin with. And then let's add to our Big Mac here, right? Mm-hmm. So... 911 God bless this 911 operator because I would have lost my shit a long time ago. Mm. Uh she says it's okay sir we've got them on the way okay can you give me what kind of description of pajamas was she wearing to which Ronald Cummings says I don't effing know I was at work and hangs up the phone. Yeah. That's the most counterproductive thing that you could possibly do in this why not just ask Misty Who's, who's clearly still in the same room with you if you don't know rather than hanging up the phone. Let's let's help, you know. Right, that's very unhelpful. Again, okay, so what is he doing in the trailer Why all this is going on? Do you have any idea or any? Well, I'm basing off basing this off of what his words are, what I think he is to be saying, because again, I think he's just kind of stomping around the house. Maybe he is walking in and out of the trailer during this time, right? But because there's there are times where you can hear him much louder than other times, and I think he's probably pretty vocal through the entirety of these calls, right? 
but some of that he's vocal with Misty and some of it, he's just vocal to anybody that's willing to listen. And I, I think he's really just walking around at some point. I do hear him say something to the point of where is my phone? Now we believe that Misty is on his phone <laughs> and, right. and Where's you know, phone? but again, oh, reactionary, right. he might be looking for her phone and just said that. And that you will hear that in uh, one of the upcoming clips. Well, and he also likes to wear these chains, like a, a necklace, these little chains and they're like really small. So I wonder if he's like, because he's going to go find who took his daughter and kill him. If he's also looking for his little tiny chain to put on. So he's a little tougher when he confronts the person. Now, this is where we're going to hear 911 calling back to Ronald Cummings. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get that. See, and it sounds like they hang up again. They yeah. being the people calling and asking for help. Right. Well, they didn't call this time. Right. Were, right. But the ones that need help. Correct. But it's weird, though, too, because I wish I could understand what he's saying in the background, because I think he's saying more. I really think there's something to this idea of that in his head, somebody took his child. And look, and it might not be somebody that is involved in his drug history or in his drug circle, but you also have had custody issues with your ex. And so is that where his head is going, is taking him, you know, all oh, did my, did my, did my ex-wife come take our daughter? Mm -hmm. I'll kill him. You mm -hmm. know, like they can't do this. I have custody now. You know what I mean? So that's, that's where I wonder where his head is going. 
Well, when 911 first calls back, it is Ronald that answers the phone. He says hello, and then he's like whining and crying, which should be expected in this situation, to which the 911 operator wants to talk to Misty now because Ronald's of no help. And they want to get some more information. This part is real interesting to me because this is one of the few times throughout this lengthy 911 call where they do, where Misty and Ronald do provide some good information to which the 911 operator very smartly asked, ma'am, okay, listen, I need you to answer some questions. Does the door look like it was pried open Mm -hmm. to which it takes some time to get to the answer, but Misty says, no, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't. And then 911 asked to clarify, it doesn't look like it is to which Misty says, no. Right. I, again, look, she didn't know what numerical meant. So is it possible that she heard the word pry and she was trying to figure out, you know, is it propped? Is pry a word with prop? That's that's where my head goes. But the door is propped open. And when asked if the door was pried open, she's saying no. It right, but I think that's where the that's where the hesitation is. Is that either one she might not be able to under, you know, hear her, but maybe she doesn't really fully understand the question. I'm going to go the other way with that because when when asked if the door is still propped open, she says yes. When asked if it looks like it was pried open, she says no. Now, this is where the 911 operator very smartly, again, lets them know, hey, tell your husband to do not touch anything because they are going to get a canine unit out there. And Misty says, okay, tells him not to touch anything. They're bringing canines out. Now, Ronald C- Cummings in the background, at this point, you're hearing him say something to the effect of they better bring something out here because if I get my hands on that mf I'm going to kill him. I don't give a F about prison. Again, reminding us prison doesn't scare him. Hmm. Um, again, not helpful to Misty or the 911 operator. And But this leans against the, the X theory that I had. That, that he was thinking that possibly the ex came. That he's going through a short list of people in his head that, yeah, that might have been yeah, involved. Yeah, when I get a hold of him, and and then you go, well, was she seeing somebody that, that maybe he thought would be responsible for this? And I like that the operator's pointing out, hey, he's got to be, he's got to calm it down a little bit because we can't have him being violent or screaming and yelling when the officer's arrive on the scene because they're going to be face to face. They're going to need to get more better information than what was this operator tried her very best to get good information. Mm -hmm. She's just not getting it from Ronald or from Misty to which again, at the end of the call, they're being asked, we need to get her date of birth. We need to get Haley's date of birth. Misty does not seem to know that it, it seems more to me like she's asking Ronald what is her date of birth rather than clarifying with the 911 right, operator. Right. That's what she's doing. And Ronald then says, F her date of birth. We need to find her. F her date of birth. Um, for the record, Haley's date of birth is August 17th, 2003. Well, that's because this numb nuts doesn't know his daughter's date of birth. That's why. Right. I mean, let's, let's be. He gets upset. Oh, F her date of birth. Well, it, it's it's called come out here and find her. It's like, no, you, it, you, you're such a loser that you don't even know your own daughter's date of birth. At, yeah. As the call continues, I believe to hear him say that he's looking for his phone, kind of shouting about where is my phone or where is a phone. And clearly at the end, you hear him say, where is my effing phone? And I kind of believe that that, you know, he follows it up with, we've got better people to talk to than some MFers who ain't coming. And again, it sounds to me like they once again, hang up the phone. I would love to know if in fact, if that's the situation and if it was Ronald that hung up the phone or Misty, I find it strange that either of them would do so again, extremely unhelpful to the situation that started with them calling and asking for help. Now, I do believe here, I don't have the timestamps of the start of this call. We, we mentioned that the call came in at, um, three 27 Mm -hmm. 
And the call is what? Seven minutes, eight minutes long. Well, if you combine the two. Okay. So, and we don't know if there's a break in time during the, the time that they were disconnected. Well, there is a break on the audio clip, but I don't know if that's in real time. Mm -hmm. Does that make right. sense? So you're looking at right. maybe 20 seconds of disconnection and then 911 calls back. But Which could have been a couple minutes in real life. Yeah, I actually assume that it's not. Mm -hmm. I actually assume because you can hear the dialing and you can actually hear the the operator that it's you know it's just all they hung up and we're still recording. And now, because I'm assuming that in this situation, their protocol is for nine one one to call back. Mm -hmm. And so, why stop the recording? Just keep it going. So. Here where he's saying that he's looking for his phone or he's looking for a phone and he says, follows that up with, we've got better people to talk to. Uh, I got better people to talk to. Well, there, I feel like it, it's, it's, if he is innocent of anything, then, then he's just frustrated with the call. He's frustrated with the situation. He's probably, hopefully frustrated with himself that he doesn't know some very basic information about his small child. Right. But. On top of that, there, I think what he's meaning is his mother, who we do know shows up to the scene very quickly. And this is where I believe that we can say that's who he called and that's who he's wanting to call in that moment while Misty is still on the phone with 911. At the end of the day, this guy's a douche, you know, and I, and I think that's, I think this, um, his attitude, like you said, throughout the whole conversation, where is he trying to help? It's it's almost like he's displacing the blame now on them that you guys won't even show up. And look, I'm here trying to help. And I, and I do feel like that's setting, he's setting the scene for something. At 9.30 a.m. on February 10th, a nationwide Amber Alert was issued for Haley Ann Marie Cummings, age five. Blondish hair, brown eyes, 40 pounds. Wearing a pink shirt and tan shorts, missing from her family home. Members of the CART program, the child abduction response team, started to converge on Satsuma. One of these was John Merchant, a Putnam County Sheriff's Office homicide investigator. Another was Robert Hardwick from the state's attorney's office. There were also members of the FBI present. The case was being treated as an abduction from the very start. And like the captain always says, thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. We'll see you back here in the garage tomorrow. Until then, be good, be kind, and don't let him. You can start your day off right. When you find a professional on Angie to get your plumbing right first. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Visit Angie.com. You can do this when you Angie that.